Hello there, this is Bic Benedict. We're playing Resident Evil 4 on professional difficulty, and this is my no damage guide for the aforementioned title on the aforementioned difficulty. We are on chapter 2-1, and for the first time in the campaign, we're faced with uh, the tentacle flailing from the uh, from the area where a head used to be and it will be a random occurrence that will persist through the remainder of the campaign like I said it's random some enemies will just do it and what I would recommend is to use the high caliber rifle because one shot with that when it's maxed out to level I think even level three it will just it will kill it instantly so we have this chapter and the next chapter clocking in, I think, at about 10 minutes each, so they're not that bad. The next spike in difficulty will occur in the next chapter, and it will be the confrontation where um, you're trying to defend a house while enemies are swarming in, and you've stashed Ashley in one of the, the bureaus while Lewis tries to assist you, and it took me exactly 35 minutes. I looked at my my raw footage right now and it's not that bad actually once you realize that the whole situation can be expedited if you just do mass killings and remember that it's a fucking war so you need to be going in there heavy on the grenades and make sure that your weapons are are all maxed out um, I've showed you the locations of everything so far the treasures I may have missed one or two. Hopefully I haven't missed that many. I don't think I have, though, honestly. But I am going to speed one of these sections up. Uh, feel free to sell that, because you don't combine that with anything. So you'll need a lot of, like I said, the fight that's coming up, it's a war. So you need ammunition to win the war. You need a lot of bullets. Grenades are very, very helpful to, to, to kill clusters of enemies and just make sure your weapons are maxed out. I'll, I will get you through it. If you're fast and you are dealing max damage to these enemies, you shouldn't struggle too much. So, not much to say here. I will, um, I will be speeding up one of these. Anytime a knife section is prolonged, taking a long time that is, I'll speed it up. So, so it looks what we're doing now is um, looks like we're at some kind of a mill area, and what we're going to do is pull the lever up here, and when we come back, we're going to stave off some enemies. However, the best place to stand is right up here. So once the lever's pulled, you can jump down. I'm not sure where Ashley is. Maybe we have... I don't think we... No, we haven't. Sorry. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. We haven't met up with her yet. But the enemies are going to spawn right there. I edited the cutscene out. You can try to stand on the edge of the planks right there, but it's too risky in my opinion. Heading up here is just priceless. Very safe. And it wastes no ammo. Like I said though before, on chapter 1-2, make sure um, you're scanning the, the enemies, seeing which ones are throwing throwing projectiles at you. It's usually the guys with the, the vet, those brown vests and the brown caps. Usually those guys are throwing the sickles. But this was... Um, the reason you're supposed to do this, in my opinion, is it expends no bullets and the things that you are picking up from the drops are are increasing your your ever increasing inventory of stuff so watch out for that it has a large uh, a large radius kick the shit bag set them on fire and that's a done deal the items do do slowly fade so it's not always possible to get all the drops from all the enemies. I should say that in the beginning of this chapter, you can take the, the small 
boat across the lake and you will um, you will find yourself at the merchant's shop and you can upgrade the you know I would upgrade the TMP I ended up upgrading my shotgun because what I suspected was that when you sell back weapons they they take into consideration how much money you've put into that particular weapon just like in dead space so usually they give you a a small deduction of what all of all the expenditures you've put into the weapon but um, it's going to be it's going to be very helpful for the confrontation coming up in the next chapter the boss fight um, uh, there are faster ways of doing this probably but it's a pretty well-known thing that this guy is weak to grenades so what you want to do is throw two at him right away and that will put him into this state here and when that thing is sprouting from him you can run up to him and press the X button and then you'll you'll be cutting him this doesn't take that much damage off him though but what I wanted to do was 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 just premiere a few tactics here show you what he th what the kind of things that he throws he'll take that tree uproot it and throw it at you see right here I'm, I'm see watch watch right here I kind of I kind of spaz out but it's just because I'm I'm spam pressing the triggers right there see because I knew that was coming but in a moment you'll see a small little cut and that's because the dog intervenes here and distracts El Gigante for us so this guy takes a lot of doing to take down so what we're gonna do is try to get as many shots into him as possible preferably in his head let him fall and do the quick time event so there was a rhyme and a reason for saving the dog and that's that's a good reason right there because he does assist and that's just a beautiful thing this game is, is definitely uh, just one of the best games ever produced I can't think of anything else to say about it beyond that just make sure you loot all the huts over here and we're gonna be going back to the church getting Ashley running past a couple of dogs I was trying to kite these dogs and I, I realized that I could just get to the door and they weren't biting me so I did the same thing in Ninja Gaiden 2 and I hate to bring that game up every time I talk in a video but it was such a an influential game to me quite honestly I don't I don't really think it matters how long it takes a person to get to finally get to a game as long as you get to the game eventually you know and start enjoying it so um, we're gonna meet up with Ashley in a moment and well, I'll just talk about her when we actually get her because there's not much there's not much to the mechanics of her it's just a companion you know uh, basically just an escort mission for a duration of the game so once you've placed this in here this will be the final checkpoint of the level there's a couple of things to grab before you make your way up to the area where there's a puzzle and I have quite a lot of inventory coming off that fight see I knew that I was going to have to waste a lot of stuff during that fight so what I've been doing is accumulating a lot of money and a lot of items so that I can get through it and also that I can um, have something left when I'm finished with it I'm talking about the fight in the house that's coming up but for this puzzle over here what you need to do is rotate the different colored dials and put them in the pattern that I will show you what it is it is red down green left and then blue right by, by that I mean which direction the pointer is going towards and which direction is coming to and this it was this part here that finally broke through my hardened heart and kind of softened me when I just I was kind of I, I didn't know that what she would say but I was down on the ladder and I said the girl's wearing a skirt maybe I can look up it and I did 
and I didn't expect the game to be so detailed that it would you know it would call the player a pervert and she would kind of scream out and say what are you doing but it's just priceless and this was the point where I stopped hating the game started loving it and my heart was my hardened heart was melted because this is such a fucking great game no disputing that I don't think but that's the end of the chapter and I will see you um, every time you have to catch her when she is jumping down take care